Well, hello, my name is Steve Samuel from Design Visionaries, and today I would like to share with you a lot of the techniques that uh, were used in order to calculate the CG and the water displacement and the positioning of different things on our forward-facing rowing apparatus. And so we're building the actual uh, pontoon boat so that we can uh, test out our theory or our device. Um, we're building it with thin wood and, and uh, fiberglass and PVC tubing, etc., etc., just to give a, get a proof of concept. So we're trying to save a lot of money here. As you can see, I've got it modeled. I don't have the reverse rowing apparatus here in this model, but this is the little boat that we're creating uh, to test it out. And the techniques that I'd like to tell you about is how we uh, analyze the CG of the pontoon. And so we start with the pontoon assembly. And the pontoon assembly is, I'm going to just take away all the little components so you can see how we put this thing together. So the pontoon assembly started with a uh, plywood shape like this. We actually, it's 10 foot long, so there's a little seam in here, but I didn't uh, model that in. So there you go. You have a piece of uh, a plywood, and you have a 10 degree angle on it. And uh, we did these curves with a... Uh, saber saw and then you put on a little rib structure or a little I'm going to call it the frame the rear frame this was made out of uh, two by twos which of course are one by 1.5 by 1.5 you know there's people that actually get annoyed at that you know when you purchase a two by four it's actually uh, one and a half by three and a half <laughs> and that's because they start with a bigger shape and then they mill it and make it perfect so that's why those are like that historically it's been a little funny anyway so you've got a rear frame you've got a mid frame you've got a front frame and you have a front rib creating this piece of geometry was uh, a matter of hand carving it with a planer and I got the basic shape and then I carved the heck out of it and was there for quite some time but what a labor of love um, we had sheet, literally sheet rock screws that we screwed this whole thing together with, and then we put on a top plate. There's a top plate. Uh, once the top plate was on, and the top plate has the 10 degree angle as well, right there, and that 10 degree angle is carried all along this kind of curved interface. So once we had this basic shape, then we put thin wood on it. It's uh, basically uh, 0.125 thick subfloor. And uh, bending it um, around this shape wasn't that easy, but we used lots of glue, and I had a brad nailing gun. So we would, I did the straight section first, and then I pushed the plywood onto the this uh, front rib, and I ch -ch -ch, uh, put a bunch of um, brads in it, air actuated uh, nail gun brads, and so that was the left panel, and then uh, there was the the right panel. I call it the panel. And then there's the rear plate. So this plate right here is very easy to put on because it's all flat. It doesn't have the crazy shape. And then finally, uh, what I did is I took all of these shapes and I took the top surfaces and I sewed them together and I got a really good uh, model of the outside surface. And then I shelled it with a negative 0.02 um, I've measured, I went out to the shop and I measured the thickness of the fiberglass with some of the resin on it and it was 0 0.015 so I'm using 0 0.02 because we're still going to coat it and sand it and make it smooth but it shouldn't get much thicker than that so so there you have it. Now the density of fiberglass and the density of the uh, wood that we're using were not listed in the um, in the uh, uh, assign uh, materials, the material list, or the, you know, the normal material uh, library. Thank you, <laughs> library. So I had to create the wood and the fiberglass myself. I did that. It's a very easy thing to do when you go into, um, <clears throat> when you go into the assigned materials, and if you hit the little button right here, 
um, create material and then you type in the name and type in the density and right here you can type in a new name stevonium stevonium it's got a density of 10 pounds per inch cubed at least that's how I feel every now and then <laughs> if I haven't worked out in a while it feels like really dense um, anyway so now I've got stevonium as a as a material it's very expensive very expensive and exotic materials stevonium uh, okay um, joking aside for a second in order to get the uh, material the uh, CG I then go to tools um, I'm sorry I go to analysis measure um, with all the little components here I want to make sure that object set is turned on object set I want to make sure that the filter says solid bodies and I want to make sure that the result filter is on body and um, and I want to make sure that this little switch right here is associative you'll see why in just a moment if you don't already know and then I'm going to just make a box around the whole thing and there I get the current weight of everything put together that's a uh, 39 pounds so that's commensurate with how it feels when I lift the thing um, there's some pictures for of the uh, actual uh, wooden prototype that we're making or I guess it's the finished product it's the production model because we're only making one of these unless you know somebody calls us up and says hey I want one of those too which we'd be glad to make another one um, and then we need to turn this little switch on um, because this is the thing that will uh, leave an artifact right at the CG once you say OK or apply so as soon as I say OK um, as you can see I get the CG and that makes all the sense in the world it's um, you know closer to this side than this side because this side has the the back plate and this side has two ribs whereas this one only has one whatever and of course the uh, the square material is heavier than this let's call it for lack of a better term triangular material so anyway um, there's the CG 39 pounds um, and now the most important thing that we can do is do a little study as to how deep this thing's going to sink when we put the full weight on it the full weight on each pontoon being its own weight so it's 30 let's call it 40 pounds and then half of the weight of the person who is rowing it let's say that's another I'm gonna make I'm gonna be conservative let's say the person and all the gears and so on and so forth are 300 pounds so you get 150 pounds plus another 40 pounds is 190 pounds so what we need is 190 pounds worth of water displacement so in order to do that I'm gonna go to the pontoon um, I'm gonna go to the fiberglass model rather and open up the fiber fiberglass because the fiberglass model is a big envelope see that and the envelope has a wall thickness that is 0 0.02 inches um, and I like I said that I think that's a little conservative um, but it's hard to measure the thickness of the fiberglass when it's stuck on the boat <laughs> um, so good so I've got this this model let me go to view and shut off this section great and what I want to do is extract all the exterior surfaces and sew them into their own solid and then I'll be able to um, get a mass property of it I'll put the uh, material properties to that of water and uh, away we'll go so here let's go to home more and we do the extract geometry command and what we're going to do is extract a region of faces so there it goes region of faces and <clears throat> the way this works is we select a seed face like this and then we select a boundary face like that and we make sure it says associative we make sure it says fix a current timestamp hide original I could take or leave but that's okay and I'm just gonna say okay all right so now what that does is it goes through that solid body and it rips away all the well I shouldn't say it duplicates all the outside surfaces ex, uh, excluding the one that you said 
was your seed surface. So now in, in order to turn this into a solid, I just have to heal this little wound. I'll go to surface more bounded plane because it is a flat plane back, fl <laughs> flat plane back there. It's not easy to say. So we're getting all these edges and we're covering it up. And we now need to make a solid out of that. So I'm going to select that surface and that surface. So I'm going to hit show result and look for the little sign that says solid body created. Great. So there's the solid body. Now that solid body is supposed to emulate the mass properties of water. And so I'm going to go to tools, assign materials. I'm going to select the li uh, library materials and I'm going to go and find water. There it is, water. So I could do saturated liquid or water vapor gas, but this is going to be water, water. <laughs> and so I select on it and I select the model and I say, okay. It says some bodies have inherited material. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so, so the, uh, the sewn body that I have has the inherited material uh, properties of fiberglass because that's what it used to be, but that's okay. So we're going to say water and say okay. So far so good. Then we're going to place on here a datum plane, which is controlled by a variable, uh, OFFSET equals minus five. There you go. Say okay. So what we've done is we've created an expression. If we go to user expressions, you'll see offset minus five. And now what I need to do with that is trim the body. And I'm trimming this body right here. And I'm trimming it with that datum plane that I can move up and down. And I'm cutting off the top. Say OK. And that is a measure of the water when the offset is minus five. So now we need to take the weight of this thing and find out if it uh, gets us up to the 190 pounds, 100 and let's call it 200 pounds. We need to know how much of this will, how high the water level is to get us to 200 pounds. So the way to do that now is to say control E and we're going to do I'm sorry, that's one way. The other way is, let's, let's show you the easier way. The easier way is to do analysis, measure, object, select solid body. <coughs> Excuse me. Make sure that this is on. Make sure associativity is on. And select the geometry and say OK. All right, what do we got? We have a mass of water equal to 147 pounds. So we still have to go up a little bit more. So let's go up a little bit more. Let's say minus seven. And right away, you could see the mass is now 216. So um, 216, 216 pounds. So seven's too much. Let's go minus six. We go six inches. And that is 181 pounds. So minus 6.5. Minus 6.5. And that is probably close enough. Uh, did it recalculate? Hold on. Minus 6.5. There we go. There you go. That's close enough to 200, 198 pounds. So 6.5 inches will be enough displacement by far uh, to do exactly what we want. Uh, the CG is here in the middle. And that's a nice thing to know that uh, it's doing the right thing here. Um, so great. So now when I go back to the model, I know that the water level is here. I know my feet are going to be up on these pedals. And of course, as the uh, 
as the boat rocks back and forth, the angle of these hulls give us uh, a stability because when the box, when the boat rotates this way, this way, the pontoons are going to get a lot wider or the amount of displacement is going to get greater at the back because of the this v-shape and when it rotates the other way excuse me for that and when it rotates the other way the stability that is given by a v-shaped hull will rotate it back this way so there you have it that is um, a really nice there's a nice few techniques that I've used there I've got a nice assembly with all the cool things in it that I can um, play with and change the, the dimensions of if I need to and all of these um, components have the right mass properties and if I take away the panels you can see so clearly how this whole thing's been constructed with the frames and the top plate and all the curved stuff so as per usual uh, thank you very much for watching my video it's quite a privilege to share this kind of stuff with you I get really excited about it and I'm really excited to finish the build on this I'm going to show you um, some of the uh, some of the things that we've already built and uh, hopefully we'll be done with the whole design and the whole project and we'll be on to the next thing very soon thanks again